Throughout these videos so far, we've almost exclusively been looking at and analysing pre-capitalist exchange relations and societies. I've made a few hints towards capitalism or what it may be and how it functions, and Marx in the book itself does write much more about the specific differences and comparisons between the two. However, it's not until this chapter that Marx really begins to focus on the formation of capitalism and how it works. The way the book is structured is actually quite crucial to his argument. What we see in the context of the previous chapters is not some randomly picked moment of history and Marx pointing to it, claiming that this is capitalism. Instead, what we see is that from an unnatural idea of value or worth, the idea that my thing has to be equal value to your thing before we exchange them, an idea that has no material basis and is essentially a human construct, resulted in a complex, expanding social relationship between people that shifts and shapes our history. While the miser is merely a capitalist gone mad, the capitalist is a rational miser. Before getting into the main point of this chapter, I'd briefly like to discuss what a capitalist actually is. Throughout Capital, Marx is not interested in the individual person or a capitalist individual traits or peculiarities, although at times he certainly gets angry about some individuals. He's interested in the social relationship between groups of people that define them as a class. If they don't possess this social relationship, then they are not a capitalist. It's not a distinction about somebody being rich or having money. As we discussed in the previous chapter, a hoarder of money, even a rich one, is not exactly a capitalist. It's what they do with that money that defines them as one. This boundless drive for enrichment, this passionate chase after value, is common to the capitalist. Marx sees money, or more precisely, money's ability to make more money, as the origin of capitalism, the egg that capitalism hatches from. In the previous chapter, we saw how the circulation of commodities, CMC, runs parallel to the circulation of money, MCM. And it's now this circuit that Marx begins to investigate. The first thing we notice about the circuit MCM is why? Money being exchanged for a commodity to exchange back for the same amount of money seems a pretty pointless exchange, essentially being a roundabout way to exchange two equal sums of money. I wouldn't be a very successful capitalist if I was buying footballs for £10 and then selling them for £10. So the goal of the capitalist was to exchange for a larger amount of money. Marx describes this circuit as MCM prime, or money exchanged for a commodity, exchanged for a greater amount of money than was originally spent. This extra amount of money, the profit, Marx calls surplus value. Surplus value is probably one of the most important parts in this book. In later chapters, we will get into a distinction between the differences of surplus value and profit. However, for now, it's important just to recognise that surplus value is the extra amount of money received in MCM prime. M prime equals M, the original amount of money, plus M delta, an unspecified extra amount of money, or the surplus value. The circulation of commodities is the starting point of capital. The production of commodities, their circulation, and that more developed form of their circulation called commerce, these form the historical groundwork from which it rises. The modern history of capital dates from the creation in the 16th century of a world embracing commerce and a world embracing market. Historically, capitalism first appeared in the form of monetary wealth, usurous capital, which is loaning money at interest, the credit money we discussed in the previous chapter, and merchant's capital, buying things and selling them at a higher price. Marx recognises the important roles that these specific forms of capital play in the functioning of capitalism as a whole system. However, his focus on these specific roles are left for discussions in volumes two and three of Capital. Marx is much more interested in a different form of capital, one that plays a much bigger role, industrial capital. We have therefore to examine first the distinguishing characteristics of the forms of the circuit and in doing this, the real difference that underlies the mere difference of form will reveal itself. 
Marx now returns back to the two circuits of commodity circulation and money circulation to compare and contrast them a little more closely. Firstly, they are the inverted forms of each other. MCM is the opposite of CMC. The order of the phases are inverted. C to M, M to C is instead M to C, C to M. Next, they have different mediators. In CMC, money is the mediator of exchange. In MCM, the commodity is the mediator. In the context of their money relation, in CMC, the money is spent. If I exchange my commodity for money, then exchange the money for a commodity, the money has left my possession. In MCM, the money is advanced. It returns back to the original owner after the sale. In CMC, while the money is spent or lost, in MCM, the money's return back to the owner can only happen because it was advanced in the first place, a reflux action. Similarly, money is displaced or moves from its owner twice in MCM. In CMC, the commodity is displaced twice. Both circuits have a different determining factor. In the CMC circuit, the use value is the final goal. However, in the MCM circuit, the exchange value is the determining purpose. If we consider merchants capitalists, their interest in the commodities is how cheaply they can buy or how much they can sell them for. There's also a difference in the quality and quantity distinction. In CMC, the difference between the exchange is of use values. The trade of one commodity for another is a distinction of quality or how useful the other commodity may be. For the MCM circuit, or more accurately the MCM prime circuit, the distinction is one of quantity, how much money can be exchanged. And finally, that the CMC circuit is limited. Its goal is the consumption of use values. The MCM prime circuit, however, and its continual circulation of capital is potentially limitless. It's the valorization of value, as Marx calls it. Valorization is a common concept in Marx's work. What he means by it is something's ability to act itself independently or within itself. So the valorization of value is value's ability to define and magnify its own worth. The circulation of capital and money's limitless ability to create more money is also the limitless expansion of value. So Marx concludes that the general formula for capital within the circulation sphere is MCM prime.